Facts Mars and today's Piggy Award goes out to Tennessee to the State Licensing Board for Veterinarians. A woman named Lori Weaver in Lori Wheeler in Tennessee started giving uh, horses massages because she adopted a horse that had some disease and she grew to like doing it and the Tennessee tells her that she ha she has to go through the entire process she has to become a veterinarian this is despite the fact that she's been licensed and License to do it on humans, but she has to go to veterinary school, do it to horses, and she's also licensed in that Indiana to do it. Well, she uh, <coughs> wanted to expand this into a career. working with both horses and humans, and the Tennessee Board of Veterinary Medicine Examiners got involved due to an anonymous complaint. Why don't you sons of bitches just mind your own business? Oh, artifacts! We are minding our own business! No, you're minding her business. Mind your own business! Why don't you son of a bitches just resign? In April, <coughs> in April, Wheeler received a letter from the board explaining that she wouldn't be allowed to give horse massages in Tennessee without being licensed. And as a veterinarian process, it require years of additional expensive schooling. She ignored the board's letter and continued practice, even if she gave the horse massages for free rather than as a business and she could face fines of up to five hundred dollars and be sent to jail for as much as six months for committing a class B misdemeanor. Now I gotta say again you uh, bureaucrats can stick it where the moon don't shine. We don't like scum like you in this country. We're supposed to have this thing called freedom. <coughs> I can be fined very heavily or put in jail for massaging horses, even if I do it for no money, she said. I would have to go to veterinary school. How crazy is that? I wouldn't learn anything about massaging there, because it's not in the curriculum. As Wheeler pushed back against the board's threats, Things started making even less sense. An email shared with reason, Wheeler asked who had filed a complaint against her prompting board's cease and desist letter. That was confidential, she was told. A right to know request seeking more information was blocked by the board on the grounds that she was seeking private medical records. Could she petition the board to Change the rules regarding horse massages? No, it wouldn't help. The petition to to petition the board, she was told by Keith Hodges, an attorney for the board, an email dated July 18, 2016, because the definition of veterinary medicine was a matter of state law, even though the relevant state law says nothing about animal massaging. Well, she wasn't getting paid, she asked. Would that make a difference? Arguably, compensation shouldn't matter, I just wrote back. One of the purposes of the law is to protect from being misled by incompetent, 
unscrupulous and unauthorized practitioners. It says nothing about being paid. As Wheeler learned more about the board's rules, she found more head-scratching inconsistencies. Giving a massage to a horse in Tennessee requires a veterinary license, but a resident of the state can castrate a horse or artificially inseminate a horse without being licensed, even though both of those activities would seem to have far more in common with a vet's medical training than anything Wheeler was doing. That's an arbitrary and inconsistent restriction on liberty and work, says Brad Bolshak, director of litigation for the National National-based <coughs> Beacon Center free market think tank. Bolchak has been working with Wheeler and another woman, Martha Stowe, who has similarly been told by State Board of Veterinary Medical Examiners she can't pr practice horse massages and the legal ramifications of contact conflict with the board. No lawsuit has ever been filed as of this writing, but Bolchak believes that the two women would have a strong cases that they decide to pursue it, and if the board refuses to back down. <coughs> Horse massaging is a relatively obscure but growing profession. Increased interest in alternatives to traditional med medical treatments and American health care has spilled over into an exciting use of similar cures for pets and livestock. The American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association which represents vets who practice alternative forms of medicine treatment has grown from having less than 50 members in 1982 to 1,000, more than 1,000 members last year. <coughs> So this poor woman was being railroaded by a virtually faceless, nameless bureaucracy. And I, this is unacceptable. We're supposed to have this thing called freedom in this country. And a veterinarian a degree doesn't even teach us. Yeah, I mean, this woman could go get a veterinarian degree. <coughs> Sorry about that. I'm coughing. I get the crap down my lungs after I get it in my throat and the head. And you gotta cough the crap up because you can't get anything anymore to dry it up. And you used to have the stuff that. Had suited up for a minute, and now you can't get it. You can't get anything effective over the counter, so you just got to put up with this crap rather than taking care of it. But anyway, this woman, uh, I feel sorry for her. I know you love critters, ma'am, and I don't blame you for loving critters. I don't know what to say other than maybe move to another state where you don't have a bunch of essentially Marxist uh, bureaucrats trying to control everything. I don't know what else to tell you, ma'am. And see from the pictures that. Uh, you love that horse. This is just all about tyranny. So a piggy award goes out to the state of Tennessee Board of Veterinary Med Medical Examiners. You truly deserve a piggy award. I'm Artifacts Mars. Thanks for watching.